Hi and welcome back to the channel, it's great to see you. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe just here. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my misadventures in photography. So this week, I want to take you back to last week's video, the review of the Samyang 14mm 2.8. Now the reason why I want to do this is because I left out one important discovery that I made. Now if you haven't seen the video, I'll just link that here. I found that if I connect my Canon 5D to a lens that has a communication chip, then when I come to connect my Samyang 14mm lens, there is no communication between the lens and the camera because there's no chip. Now that means that the camera adopts the previous aperture of the lens that was attached to it with a communication chip. So when it comes to astrophotography, you may find it very difficult to focus on a star while shoots in live view. And this is because the camera will remember the last aperture setting that was communicated to it. But the trouble is this aperture could be far higher than what you want. There is a very, very quick process to fix this though. So before you actually change the lens over to the Samyang, change the aperture down to 2.8 on the chipped communication lens. So when you do actually swap the lens over, you will be able to focus very easily using live view. Also, I think it would be a very wise idea to check the firmware on your camera and to ensure that it's up to date because that could potentially be the source of your problem. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether this is a Canon specific problem. I'd really like to know if any of you out there have had this same issue and with what cameras. So drop me a comment below. Also, I have seen that Samyang have released a Mark II version of this lens. Now, as far as I've seen, the optics look very, very similar and it doesn't look like there's much change. The design has changed slightly and I do like the new design and they've got a really good functional lock focus button, which I think is a brilliant idea. But here's the downfall. The downfall is that the fact that it's gonna retail at 400 pound. Now I know that I can get hold of the Mark I version, which is just as sharp, I have no doubt. The price point is 235 pound. 235 pound compared to 400 pound. I know where I'm gonna be looking. So, uh, pff, well done Samyang. Now the Mark I version of this lens is sharp and I have no doubt in my mind that it will satisfy any astrophotography that you want to do. And I really can't at this point justify spending almost double the money to get the Mark II version. So for me, I don't think I'll benefit any further from having the Mark II. So nah. Not this time. So that's the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed. I know it's a very short video this week, but I just thought that this bit of information was quite valuable, and I think it's gonna help you if you're really considering buying this lens. If you haven't seen the video already, I'll just put another link just here, and then hopefully that'll tie up this video for you. So I do realize that this upload is slightly later than what my schedule should be, uh, and I do apologize for that. So I will see you next Saturday at 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock next Saturday. I hope you have a great week and I will see you then.